Welcome back guys. Last time we talked about the Fountech Neo X 2.0 and before that we talked about the Biowave GRT145. I almost forgot what it's called. I think that's right. Anyways, uh, both are very similar ribbons and we're going to talk about that. Uh, and we're also going to talk about their distinct differences in their performance and the measurements I got. But before we look at any measurements, I do want to just make one clarification about the packaging on the Biowave. After I put up my video, the supplier contacted me and said, that is the packaging that you receive those tweeters in. Right now, they don't have any like formal manuf manufacturing packaging. They come in on skids and then he uh, puts the box together the way you saw it in the, pa in the video. I also wanted to point out that the Viawave weighs more and it feels like it's built better. Not to say that the Fountech is cheesy, because it's not. These are actually both really well-built tweeters. But if I had to you know, give a point uh, for build quality, it would go to the Viawave. Next, I wanted to talk about the spec sheets because both drivers come with fairly comprehensive spec sheets, but the Viawave, it's actually got some information on there I've never seen on another manufacturer's spec sheet that I think is quite important. I really like what they've done. Take a look. Okay, here we have a quick scan of the Viawave data sheet. You got all of the electrical parameters in a picture, and then you got frequency response, off axis and vertical and horizontal, impedance, and then distortion data as well, and the dimensions of the driver. Here the Fountech uh, data sheet has a frequency response and the electrical parameters. Here um, we have the power handling of the Viawave and the power handling of the Fountech. I generally find this information completely useless, but on the Viawave spec sheet we have this chart here. This is the maximum input voltage, which Voltage is a much better way of describing driver power handling anyways. And you can see the trend around 17 hertz, 1700 hertz changes. You, you rapidly gain power handling as you go above 1700 hertz. So this is much more useful to us because anything above 1700 hertz is going to be a good safe crossover in terms of power handling. Okay, with that stuff out of the way, let's take a look at the measurements. First, I want to talk about the frequency response and the sensitivity differences between both of these tweeters. Take a look at these measurements. Okay, here we have the red in, is the Fountech and the green is the Viawave. And generally, when I look at these two, the Viawave is a much smoother response and I would rather work with it. The Viawave is also between 6 and 9 dB. Uh, more sensitive. It is a 4 ohm tweeter whereas the Fountech is an 8 ohm tweeter. When you consider the impedance this is more like a 3 to 6 dB efficiency difference but still the Viawave has loads more uh, efficiency. Uh, you can see down in the stop band where you'd want to cross over these tweeters the Fountech has some irregularity in the response shape that could make it quite difficult to cross over. Now that we've looked at the on-axis responses of both tweeters Let's take a look at the off-axis responses. First we have horizontal off-axis responses, which when I look at both sets of data between the Viawave and the Fountech, I can't really pick a winner here. They both have about the same performance in this category. But when we look at the vertical off-axis, we can see that Viawave has some, done something differently here. I can't tell you what it is. The ribbons are about the same height. Um, but somehow in the faceplate or something or other, they've managed to get a little bit better vertical off-axis response, which for a ribbon, this is somewhat important because they struggle with vertical off-axis response. So another point for the Viawave here. Next, we're gonna talk about distortion, and that's really kind of the point of this video because a lot of you have asked about distortion performance in my test reviews, and I've been reluctant to post distortion for a few reasons. It's really difficult to interpret, and it's open to a lot of error. So in these tests, I measured the tweeters and I adjusted the amp voltage to get to a point where I was about 92 dB through the crossover region. So we're talking below three, 4,000 hertz here. Once I had the levels to 92 dB, then I ran the distortion measurements. Naturally, because the Viawave is much more sensitive, I had to lower the output on the Viawave and increase the output on the Fountech to get to that 92 dB. So let's start with cumulative spectral decay and then we'll talk about harmonic distortion in a minute. Okay, first I just wanted to mention that all these distortion measurements, the sensitivities were set 
at one meter, but then I measured at 0.25 meters away. I also used a 39 microfarad cap uh, to protect the tweeters from these torture tests. Okay, here we have the ViaWave uh, tweeter and its um, cumulative spectral decay. And you can see that things are really, really clean above 4,000 hertz, like 5,000 hertz and up. There's a big pocket on that second slice that just is completely shut downs, uh, shuts down uh, before the third slice. And this is very, very clean. But the area around 4,000 hertz, there is a little bit of ringing. And when you get to when we get to the Fountech, you'll see it's actually not quite as good as the Fountech in this area. Although it is uh, quite a ways down in amplitude, and um, this is also getting pretty close to where your high pass filter, uh, your crossover point would be, and it would also um, suppress this a little more. And also keep in mind that four kilohertz is higher in amplitude than the Fountech for this test because the level matching was done between two and three kilohertz. So it's not as bad as it looks. This is the Fountech. And you can see in that area above 5,000 hertz, there's an extra slice or two in there. Really, that's not that much. Um, it's, this is a very clean sounding uh, tweeter above 5,000 hertz, um, even down to 3,000 hertz. Below 3,000 hertz, this thing is an absolute resonance monster. It just rings out forever. Um, so even though this thing is better at 4,000 hertz than the ViaWave, it's marginally better. It's it's it really doesn't matter that low in amplitude. The area between 1,000 and 2,000 hertz on this Fountech is completely audible and really needs to be shut down hard. So now that we've looked at that, we're going to look at harmonic distortion. First up is the Fountech at 2,000 hertz, 2,500 hertz, 3,000 hertz, and the ViaWave at 2,000 hertz, 2,500 hertz and 3000 Hertz. <laughs> if you want to look at those closer, you can go back and press pause. But I'm going to focus on the 2000 Hertz. This is the Fountech. This has 7% total harmonic distortion, which isn't exactly relevant or useful. But you can see the harmonics are down, you know, 25 to 42 dB roughly. Um, so this thing isn't too happy at 2000 Hertz. It definitely wants to be crossed uh, above that. Um, thankfully, that's a perfectly reasonable crossover point and it would suppress things more. Here's the Fountech. Now you can see we're less than 2% total harmonic distortion here and the third, fourth, and fifth harmonic are way below 50 hertz at 50 dB here. The second harmonic at 35 dB, really that's actually pretty low. If we look at 3000 hertz, this is the Fountech. We have 4% total harmonic distortion, and the third harmonic is only 28 dB down. This is a little concerning because a 2500 hertz crossover is a little bit out of the question here, and 3000 hertz, you would suppress it more, but this could be a concern. Um, 28 dB down is quite a ways down. It's hard to hear stuff that far down from the fundamental but it could be audible and it does show signs, warning signs that there could be a problem. By contrast, here we have the ViaWave at 51 dB down from the fundamental and only 0.61% total harmonic distortion. So you can see this thing is completely clean at 3000 Hertz. Really no concerns with crossing at 3000 Hertz at all with this tweeter. Okay, so when we talk about the second harmonic, that's a doubling of the fundamental frequency. So in musical terms, that's one octave higher than the fundamental. When we talk about the third order harmonic, we're talking about um, a, a tripling, a threefold of the fundamental. So in musical terms, this wouldn't be a full octave. Uh, this would be like going from the A note to the E note, whereas the second order harmonic would be from the A note to the A note. So that you can hear this in musical terms, I got this microphone here, I'm just gonna play an A uh, fundamental, the one octave above the fundamental A. So that would look like this, A and A. When you play them together, you can barely even hear that, it just adds a little bit of texture 
the mm. fundamental. But when we play um, the third harmonic, that would be an E. So that would be like this. I'm trying to play them equally in amplitude. And that E sticks out way more. In music, it doesn't necessarily sound bad because E is part of the A scale and actually forms a nice chord. But it definitely is more audible versus this. See how that A just disappears, the second harmonic? The E sticks way out. So this is why the third order harmonic is considered so offensive compared to the second. So when we see high third order harmonic distortion, we really need to be concerned. So at this point, we have the data to two very similar ribbon tweeters that I think are both, you know, good ribbons to consider in your next project. But if I have to compare the two, I would say the Vide Wave is a clear winner here. Obviously, it costs a heck of a lot more money than the Fountech, but really, the only thing that I could say the Fountech does better than it is the cumulative spectral decay right around 4 kilohertz. And I gotta say, guys, I'm being extremely picky about that. The level is quite low where it starts to ring, and by the time you put a high-pass filter on this tweeter, man, you're, you got golden ears if you can hear that. And I would guess that you would pretend to be able to hear that <laughs> if you told me you could. So overall, the ViaWave is just an awesome performer all around. It's no wonder every reviewer on the internet is going crazy for this thing. Based on what I'm seeing here, I'm probably going to be talking to the supplier about buying these, which I didn't plan on doing, to be honest. They were on loan because he thought I would want to try them, and he was looking to get a review. And, uh, you know, first got to listen to them before I can commit to buying them. But that's why I've built these test boxes here. Uh, this whole... The whole point of this testing was because I want to build a three-way speaker. So I might be spending some money I didn't plan on spending, but if they sound as good as they measure, it'll be worth spending the money. I don't like to say that about really expensive products very often. I know what it's like to be on a budget and can only spend $50 or $100 on your, you know, your next driver choice. But in this case, I don't really want to hold back. If, um, if I can get more performance by spending more money, I'm going to do that. And in this case, I think it's actually well worth it. You really want to think about the ViaWave despite its high cost on your next project. I will keep you up to date on this three-way project. I hope to be listening to crossovers after Christmas, probably on Boxing Day. Uh, that's called the day after Christmas down in the States. Uh, we call it Boxing Day up in Canada. So uh, you probably won't hear from me until possibly the new year. In that case, Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching my channel. I started in the spring of this year and I gotta say thanks to all of you who have subscribed and viewed these videos. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, please check out my other videos. Like the video, comment down below, let me know what you think and I'll keep trying to hammer out these videos for you guys. Thanks, bye.